the wonderful to be in his presence tonight. Before you have a seat, why don't you just for the next two or three minutes, just focus on him. Father, we just praise you tonight. Come on, let's just shake off those uh, heaviness or maybe tiredness from the day. You said, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And Father, we just praise you and we honor you. We're so thankful that you love us unconditionally. Thank you that we can come and listen to your word without fear. Thank you, Father. Come on, just lift up your voice. Just praise him for a moment. Jesus, I praise you. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you for saving us, Jesus, the sacrifice of your life. Father, refill us with your Holy Spirit tonight. Quicken our minds and our bodies. Thank you for your strength. Strengthen all of us with your might by your spirit in our inner man. Come on, just lift up your hands as you get a smile back on your face. God's not mad at you. God's not disappointed in you. He loves you. Thank you, Father. We just give you praise. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for all that you're doing for us. Thank you for all that you're going to do in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, we all agree by saying amen. Now, I know I've been he hearing a lot about our vision here at Harvest Church, which is to reach, connect, grow, and serve. But I want to make sure we keep our mission at the very top where we love God. And because we love God, what do we do? We love people. And he gives us the ability to love people with his love. And because we love God and we love and serve people, then, you know, we live with purpose. And the way we fulfill loving God, loving people, fulfilling our purpose is by reaching, connecting, growing, and serving our way to our destiny. God is good. What is it? What is it? We love God, we love people, and we live with purpose. And what do we do every day? We're looking to reach, right? So we love God, we love people, we live with purpose, and I'm looking for people to reach every day. Whether they accept me or reject me, whether they, you know, um, and, and, and because I believe there's a heaven again and a hell to show. And I, I believe Jesus is coming at, back really soon. There's so many huge signs of the times. And so even when you're right in the middle of a tough spot, you just never know. God just could use you just in, in your countenance, in your positivity, and you just greeting them with much, much respect and honor. Then we connect. Aren't you glad to be around the company you are right now? Aren't you glad? I thank God for my company where we go to in good times and challenging times. And, you know, my heart, my heart was uh, going out to a few of you tonight. That's why we sort of paused and had a praise moment or two. Because God doesn't want you to be heavy tonight. God knows your schedule. He's not a dictator or, or a hard taskmaster. Just know this. God loves you. And he unconditionally. And... So put a smile on your face. Will you do that for me? Put a smile on your face. And let's enjoy the Word tonight. Let's enjoy the presence of God tonight. Let's do life together even when it gets tough. Let's do good times together. All right. So before you have a seat, I need you to go ahead and make sure everybody's smiling. Otherwise, make them. You may be seated. Thank you. All right, guys. i got to see some smiles over here. Thank you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, love you. See you. All right, so I'm going to look out in the congregation. If I don't see anybody smiling, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> no, it's good. You know, we all have gone through those seasons where um, we call them sort of desert seasons. 
you know, you go through the desert, sort of like a dry spell or dry uh, period of our life. And, you know, those are sometimes uh, the greatest, gro greatest growth moments we have in our life. And so, thank God we can walk by faith and not by sight, no matter what season we're in. We don't have to feel something to know God's here and God's in us. And we don't have to see something to know God's Word still is true. And He's watching over His Word to perform it. All right, let's get into the Word tonight. And I'm going to continue the thought process over the past couple times. I was talking about God's Word is medicine. God's Word is medicine. I, I want to make sure that we realize that God's Word is not like reading the letter of an ordinary book. God's Word is reading the letter of a loving father to his family. And God's Word, um, it's, it's spirit and it's life. Uh, no matter what content you hear uh, being ministered to or taught or preached, there's within the content of that word, spirit and life and truth. So tonight, I believe you're going to leave this place good and refreshed because God, God's word brings strength. God's word brings reinforcement and the Holy Spirit's here to help us. And so aren't you thankful that you aren't left to do this life alone? So God's Word is medicine. We'll go right to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. And remember that we were talking about on Sunday morning, brand new, becoming brand new, born into the family of God, born from above. And, and when we start to realize that we're children of God, we'll start to read this Word like God's speaking to us, because God's Word is God speaking to us. God's Word uh, reveals our identity, because we are born from above. And Proverbs 4.20 says, My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them, God's word, don't let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they, God's word, are life to those who find them. And God's word is healing and health to all of our flesh. Just those words right now, if you believe in God for healing in your mind, your emotions, your flesh, God's Word right now is going forward and it's spirit and truth and life and health being ministered to us right now. Tell that person next to you, I'm taking some of God's medicine. <laughs> Maybe some of us here are on prescriptions and, and uh, or you go to a doctor recently and and, and they diagnosed something, and you, you got some medicine with a, you had to go get your prescription. And, and then they tell you how much to take, when to take. And, and God's Word gives us instructions as to how to take God's medicine. And really, I, I, I read it. It says, first of all, we need to attend to God's Word, to pay attention to it. In other words, let's make sure we get our attention off of other things right now. Let's, let's give our attention to God's Word. What is He saying about what I'm going through. What is he saying just right now in this service to minister to me? And then not only say, hey, listen, pay attention to my words. I want you to get my words. But, but once you see my word, I want you to consent and submit to my sayings. There, there are people that don't believe that Jesus is a healer today. Well, uh, I know better because I know what God's word says about Jesus Christ being a healer. He just, just didn't take my sin, but he also took my sickness. And, and, and I'm going to consent and submit to God's saying over anybody's saying. Because I know the integrity of the God that I serve and his faithfulness and his flawlessness. And so once you get into the word of God, you'll have faith concerning whatever's being taught. So sometimes you're going to have to walk away from situations where people are trying to feed you negativity. <laughs> oh. I probably don't want to say this because it, it, somebody might be watching that would think I was talking about them. How do I do this? Okay, so how many know you, you could be believing God for healing and then a person hear what you went through, said, I went through that too, and then it came back on me five years later. That happened to me Sunday. <laughs> you know what I did? I was friendly, I walked away, 
I said, God, I thank you for your word. Your word never changes. I can't help what happened to someone else. I can't happen, whatever happened there or whatever didn't happen there. But I thank God you said in your word. And Father, your word is, is, is integrity itself. And you can be counted on. And I'm going to give attention to your word. And I'm going to feed your word to the place that that negative word is displaced, displaced from my life. You ever been in that same situation? And, and you almost feel like you're frightened from the person. You see it coming on. You're almost like, mm-hmm. You try to drown it out. No, you, you know, but you know, you stay filled with the word. You keep attending to God's word and then consent and submit to his sayings. And then don't let them depart from your sight. Because if we keep the word of God in front of us concerning whatever we believe in God for, we'll, we'll have a clear vision of what God wants for us. And, and we'll, keep, we'll keep our eyes set on what he says about the matter, and we won't be influenced by somebody else speaking contrary to the word. What are the directions? And we'll go more specifically uh, into these different things in some weeks ahead. But my son, all of us, what are we supposed to do? Attend to my words. So if we're going to give attention to God's words, then we're not going to give attention to some other words. Now, I'm not saying... Don't hear what a doctor's saying or you know, hear diagnosis and stuff like that because sometimes you need, to be, you need to be well informed as to how to apply your faith specifically for a situation. So don't just go to the doctor and, and you know, that's where um, people that, that um, walk by faith and they, quite don't, they, they don't quite understand uh, the balance of it, well, they'll go to the doctor and say, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. And, of course, the doctors say, well, what are you doing here then? So, but, uh, you know, God's work can, be, can still be working in you, and, and you can still be talking to somebody else, just getting information on it. And, and apply your faith. And a lot of times, and really probably more than uh, every, every situation that, that um, we bring God uh, his word in, in our life, it's going to take an element of faith. Whether you go to the doctor, I'm telling you, there was, there was a day in my life I did not want to take medicine, period. And it was a big step of faith for me to even go to a doctor to even see what was wrong so they could, you know, help me out. You know, sometimes people, they, there's some sort of stigma if you're going to go talk to some counselor. It's just ridiculous. And, and sometimes, you know what? Sometimes pride comes, uh, excuse me, sometimes humility comes before a change or a healing. Sometimes, sometimes your answer's going to come a different way than you presupposed. And maybe not the same way it did last time. <laughs> well, come on, let's take some more God's medicine. Here we go. Let God's word. Don't let them depart from your sight. Keep these words in your heart. Why? Because they are life to those who find them. And God's word is healing and health to all their flesh. My son, attend to my words. 1 John 3, 1 says, see, I'm talking about this is a father's word to us. See how very much our heavenly father loves us for he allows us to be called his children. Think of it. And we really are. But since most people don't know God, naturally, they don't understand that we are his children. Yes, dear friends, we are already God's children right now. And I, and I try to hear the word as a son of God. And I, and I read the word of God like I'm, like I'm spending time with the person of God. Colossians 3.16, talking about attend to God's word. Let the message, Colossians 3.16, let the message or the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly. When the word is in you richly, it's going to have an impact upon your life. You know, when, I, when, when I'm going through life and I'm learning lessons, whether I ever bring it out to a sermon or not, or whether I'm, whether I'm studying for a sermon, when I stay before God, I, I, I just you know, get these things in my heart, and, and God begins to, you know, I, I love to study. I could study for hours and hours, and I just don't even have the concept sometimes of time. I just love it. 
And, and, and the more understanding I get, the more understanding I get and the more revelation I get, wherever I go, it's like my wife, she, she, obviously she has her daily devotion, but when God begins to show her some stuff, she brings it to me and I learn. Because the Word's dwelling richly in here, she begins to teach me. It's just a byproduct of us letting the Word of God dwell in us richly. And it just shows out in how we're, we just share it with others. It's just in the course of a conversation. It doesn't have to be, hey, i got a sermon for you. No. Man, can you, this is so awesome. I want to share something with you. That's good. That's sharing the Word, and that, that'll be a blessing to other people. And, and also, when the Word's richly in you, not only are we teaching as, as, as not, in, not in a way of sit down and let me talk to you, grasshopper. No, no. Uh, no, you're just sharing out the abundance of your heart, the excitement you have for the Word. But also, when you begin to share what's in your heart, it's amazing when, when, when you're just sharing what you're learning, maybe at Harvest Church or, or in the young adults or in whatever, youth or whatever, and then all of a sudden you start sharing with other people, and sometimes that word you're learning brings admonishment to somebody else. You don't mean it. You don't mean to admonish people. But sometimes what you're learning is a reminder for whatever that person might need to brush up on. That's why it's so good to hang around with people who love the Word of God. Because then iron sharpens iron. And, and um, you know, it's just like uh, when God refreshes you with the principle that you've, you've, you've known for a while, maybe walked in for a while, but all of a sudden God revisits you in that area and says, that's come up higher. And it re-excites you. You're admonished to take it up higher. So we, when the Word's in us richly, because we keep the Word in our heart, then all of a sudden, do you know also there's sometimes, I mean, I'm not saying you need to try out for the praise team, but sometimes you might have a, a song or a tone of victory in your life. And sometimes you don't even know, maybe you're in a shower, you're singing, who knows? Or hymns and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. As, as I was studying this, I... I love to read after sometimes because you have to read after, read after Rick Renner if you really want to uh, study sort of, you know, on a deeper sense of some things. But, but I did look up this, this verse in Colossians 3.16, and I thought, I thought it was really good concerning God's Word being our medicine and attend to my words. Rick Renner said, in Colossians 3.16, listen to this because he goes behind uh, the Greek and breaks it down, and, and it just, it's just amazing sometimes the truths he brings out of, of the Greek language. Colossians 3.16 says, conveys the following idea, let the Word of God dwell in you richly. In other words, throw open the doors for the Word. Roll out the red carpet for the Word. Give it a grand reception, the Word. If you'll let the Word dwell in you in this way, it will produce an amazing amount of spiritual wealth in your life. Those words describe people so full of the Word of God that their entire being is affected by it. Their hearts become full of joy. Their minds are flooded with wisdom and understanding. Their mouth begins to speak that Word even to other people around you, singing songs. I'm not saying go around singing songs to other people. Most of the time, that's for your own private devotion. That's where people get in trouble with uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit and praying in an unknown tongue. Ninety-eight uh, percent of that, or really the majority of, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, is for your own private devotion and for His power to come upon you to fulfill the will of God in your life. Now, it's just a different topic, but don't you love this? Their hearts are full of joy when the rich Word is richly on the inside flooded with wisdom and understanding. Their mouths are singing songs to the Lord. This de describes people who have struck it rich spiritually. It affects your mind. It affects your countenance. It, it affects everything. And when you're filled richly with the Word of God, you begin to infect 
people wherever you go. Yeah. And, and it's so good to be reminded of these things. Because right in the middle of this service, you're being, you're, come on, did you roll the red carpet out for the Word of God tonight? Did, did you say, I, 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 open these doors wide open, come on, on, come on in, Word, come on in. I, I, I'm so thankful. I, I hope you could agree with me that I'm so thankful for the years that we have been taught the Word of faith. And, and, the, and, the, and, and the rich spiritual principles that, that we, we get to be good stewards over. You know, think about topics that might not be so exciting to you maybe as they once were. I heard it said this before, you know, if something's old to you, it's not real to you. That's why, that's why these basic different things we teach in church ought to be fresh to us. Uh, ought to be, especially, especially when, you know, someone's yielded to the Holy Spirit and they've studied, done their part, but then, then you just eat from the table of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Thank God for the word. You know, we talked about in um, last time or two about the word attend. And I'm not going to go deeply into it, but just to remind us, it means to prick up your ears. You could be thinking right now of the problem that you're dealing with. God's saying, bring me your attention. I got that. Give your attention to me. And, and let me tell you something. It, it's not always easy to take your attention off something and put it on to, to God and what he's saying about that. Because attacks are real, right? But I also have a greater one on the inside of me that lets me know, and the Word of God lets me know that I can control my thought life. I can. I can. With His help. And you know what? Even the Holy Spirit will help us think straight. He won't do our thinking for us. He's called the helper. Holy Spirit, help me with my thought life. Help me to keep my mind stayed on Jesus so I can walk in perfect peace. But I'm thankful the more consistent we are in these things, it doesn't always have to be tough. But no matter how tough it gets, thank God for the Word. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for good friends who can stand alongside us. I talked about that Word Attend means also, it's a word picture uh, of a horse pricking up its ears to amplify a sound that catches their attention. You know, there's a sound of the word. What is that sound? What is the sound of the word? It's, it's a sound that comes with salvation. It's a sound that comes with encouragement. It's a sound that comes with healing. It's a sound that brings strength. It's a sound that brings sustenance. It's, it's a sound. There's a sound of the word. It's a sound of faith. It's a sound of, of the help of the Holy Spirit. It's a sound of comfort. It's a sound that I listen for. It's a sound that's in this house. And it's a sound that we're gonna keep in this house. Because it's the only sound that helps us in this world. The voice of the Word of God. There's a sound in this house. Lift up your ears. Listen very carefully. Because God has something important to say. The doctor might say this, and if you totally focus on that, that's the way it's going to go. But if we contrast what the world is saying or, or, or what the doctors are saying, God bless them, they're trying to help us. But we need to find out what God says about that and side up with God. The word of faith gets a bad rap because there's some people that the word says call those things that be not as though they were. Well, how does that, what is that? If we could just boil it down, it's basically finding out what God says about your situation, whether it showed up in your life or not, and begin to say what God says about you. That's calling those things that be not as though they were. You're not to deny 
that sickness is in your body. No, you're, you, you're to say, regardless of what's happening in my body, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Amen. And in Jesus' name, you symptoms, you got to leave my body. Speak to the mountain. Speaking the word to your body, speaking the word to your mind, speaking the word in your world. God's word is medicine. God's word has a potential to keep us, to, to heal us, to help us live a long life in this world. Why do we want to live a long life? We want to enjoy the work of our hand, but we want to fulfill, most importantly, the full length of the will of God for our life. Thank God. We're going to, aren't we? I said we're going to because the word also, if you'll read the Proverbs and these different scriptures, and maybe, maybe I've um, spoke about a few of them recently, but I want you to hear them again because God's word is medicine. Listen to these words. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good just like a medicine. <laughs> That's why we start out this service saying, Jesus, thank you. And you get put a smile on your face, right? Because in his presence is fullness of, and his word brings joy. And, and we yield to that joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken Dry, a broken spirit dries the bones. It's dangerous to have a broken down spirit, just, just a spirit that, that is not consistent in the things of God and the ways of God. And it, it, it's not very difficult to be consistent. Because again, if the enemy can't get you to stop reading the Word, he'll think you need to read it four hours a day. And you can't. I don't know, you work? I work. You go read on the job and saying, Jesus said I'm supposed to read on the job. No, don't tell people that you got fired because Jesus said you need to read the Word at job. No, I mean, but you can listen to the Word on the way to work. Uh, you can get into devotion. You, you can make sure you start your day with a good, fresh, word-filled, you know, a chapter. And, and it, it helps you more than you can ever imagine. Have you ever been to a place where you just sort of felt dry and, and you just sat down with the word? Just didn't seem like anything was happening. And, and, but you persisted in reading that devotion. And you persisted in looking at the scriptures. And you just... You just got your devotion in, and you read the Word, and, and it seemed like a little while later, you didn't even realize it, but you, you sort of spruced up or sparked up. Same way with be, uh, um, praying in the Spirit. There, there have been times that, I, I, you know, I was tired, and I didn't feel like praying in the Spirit, but I realized, man, I'm, I, I, you know, the Word, one of the definitions of he that speaks an unknown tongue edifies himself is one version says, rebuilds that which has been torn down. And we live in a world that, that is coming at us in so many different ways. We're, we're expending effort and energy. But if we just remember, wait a minute, God, refill me with the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to go and make a whatever. My walk with God is so private. It's so private, no one even knows I'm walking with them. Well, hopefully they see the fruit in my life, which should, should, should be an indicator that the Word's dwelling in me, and the Holy Spirit's upon me, and the Holy Spirit's with me and helping me. It's all about consistency. I said the Word is, is medicine. It will extend our days. It will lengthen our lives. Proverbs 3, 1 and 2 says, take heed to the Word of God. It will lengthen your days if you take heed to it. Proverbs chapter 3, that whole chapter is so good on this. Fearing God will be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Exodus 20, 12 says, you know what? When we honor our parents, it prolongs our life. You might say, I have nothing. My parents, they aren't living right. They aren't this, that, and the other thing. But you can still visit them without arguing with them. 
and you're, and you're honoring them. You can't agree with them, and, 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 you know, I have conversations with different people. I have to keep redirecting, you know, and they want to try to get negative. I redirect it and redirect it and redirect, you know what I'm talking about? And, but still, I'm not, I'm not, we, we need to honor our elders. You say, but they don't know as much as I do. Well, they've lived longer. I said they've lived longer. And, and I'm not saying you condone what they're saying, but still you can respect them without... Again, sometimes it's just a matter of showing up just, just to, you know, be there in presence. Ephesians 6 says, children obey your parents in the Lord, in the Lord. Because you belong to the Lord, for this is right. It's the right thing to do. Honor your father and your mother. And this is the first commandment with a promise. What is it? If you honor your father and your mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on this earth. When was the last time you called your mom or your dad? They might have passed. I miss my dad. But one of the things I was able to do with dad um, is is I was so thankful that I had a good relationship with him. And, you know, maybe some of us here didn't. So I'm not here to condemn, I'm not here to condemn you at all because God doesn't. Um, and God will bring healing to that too. That's one f- wonderful thing about God is, you know what, if, if you just confess your sin, a shortcoming or missing the mark. He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And now we stand right in his standing. We can believe God. We can be blessed with someone else who, who you know, did well by their parents, but I'm not going to walk in condemnation just because I discovered it uh, uh, now that they're gone. I am so thankful God, <laughs> God is so gracious God is so merciful. I'm telling you, come on, right now, we need to all celebrate God's mercy in our life. Thank you, Father, for the mercy of God. That means we're not getting what we deserved. Oh, thank you, God, for your mercies being new every morning. Don't you dare think you never have to take advantage of the mercy of God. Right now, we can take advantage of it every day. We don't always measure up. Not saying we're living in sin, but not, we're always measuring up. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. You know, um, when God's got his finger right on something he's dealing with you about, he's not condemning you. It's your heart that's condemning you. And when your heart content, condemns you, that's when you have that countenance that's down and it, it just sort of a broken down spirit. But we can turn our attention to God. Say, God, we're going to put out the red carpet for you. We're going to open up the doors wide open. Refill me with your Holy Spirit, Father. Forgive me for not, for, for you know, that's where, you know, some people say, I, I, I live godly. But, you know, that's not just, you know, living godly is wonderful. It's great. Uh, but you know what? Every step out of the faith of God, the Word says, is sin. In other words, when we, maybe we've waned on believing God for certain things. We've got to get that right. Or every step out of the love of God, it's missing it. That's why we need to be good fruit inspectors. Let the Word of God attend to the Word of God concerning the love of God. And uh, it, that'll, that'll reduce a lot of arguments in your house if you both get a hold of it. Boy, I sure wish I saw some more smiles tonight. That would really help me out about right now. Psalm 94, 14 says, we will be satisfied with long life. When? When we set our love upon the Lord. Psalm 34, 12 through 14, God's Word is medicine. It says, keeping our tongue from evil in hypocrisy, in hypocrisy extends our life. As do departing from evil, doing good and pursuing peace. That will extend your life. How many just love peace? Peace. 
Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Peace. And, and you might be in a less than peaceful, stress-filled work environment, but still you've got to maintain your peace right in the middle of that. And that's why, it, it, again, I'm thankful that I'm filled with the Holy Spirit because when the tough things happen, man, that's the Holy Spirit. I, I can't handle this on my own. Help me. Strengthen me. And I begin to pray in the Spirit up underneath my, my breath. So I keep my count, keep my peace right in the middle of everything. Because that peace brings life. And peace, ext- peace makes life so enjoyable. I, lo- I love coming to Harvest Church. There's so much peace here. Not saying that there are t- times where, you know, could be challenging because there's all different people getting saved, been saved for a long time and and, and sometimes relationships will rub you wrong, but, you know, don't be so hard on that other person because you might have been that person not too long ago yourself, you know? But there's peace in the house. And I thank God that, that, that when I think about going home, there's no dread. It's a haven. And, and maybe some of you don't have that right now. But God can help you. God can move. If, if you're married, get into the next marriage class. A lot of people regain, gaining peace in their finances like never before because they're learning how to, to, to work a process that's going to help them in financial peace. Psalm 34, 12 again says, says, keeping our tongue from evil in hypocrisy extends our lives as do departing from evil, doing good, and pursuing peace. A few more scripture and we'll close. Deuteronomy 11, 21 says, giving heed to God's word not only multiplies our days, but also makes our days as heaven on the earth. You could have hell surrounding you, but days of heaven here on this earth because you've, you've, you've opened the doors wide open. You, you've extended the red carpet. I mean, I don't even watch Hollywood stuff anymore because I don't even know what's coming on that red carpet. Excuse me, I'm sorry. But, but I'm like, when I think of a red carpet, it's out of respect and honor and esteem. And I just find that's really interesting how Rick Renner phrased that. And, uh, but my goodness, Jesus deserves, deserves the red carpet <laughs> way above what the world can do. And we're opening up our door. I thank God. Will you thank God with me? We're in a word church. Thank God for the word. Stand up with me, please. Come on, let's ask God to give us a fresh hunger for the word of God tonight. Father, give us a fresh hunger for the word of God tonight. Oh, Father, I thank you for your presence tonight. Uh, uh, instructing us and admonishing us. And, and Father, yet, yet we're receiving life from the very Word that's proceeding out of the Word tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Father, as I've already prayed over this church and all those viewing online. Thank you for refilling us with your Holy Spirit. Oh, stay. Just begin to pray. In the Holy Ghost. Oh, just begin to pray. Not just to be built up, but to realize that the Word says, He that speaks an unknown tongue is not talking to man, but to God. How be it? In the Spirit, He speaks mysteries. It's a heart-to-heart connection. people don't quite understand being filled with the Holy Spirit sometimes people are down on what they're not up on but when we're taught that even in the book of Acts they gave thanks well giving glory to God in other languages thank you Father Roshan de Lebeki Thank you for refreshing us. Thank you for strengthening us. Thank you, Father, for lifting us up. 
thank you for, for pouring out rivers in, in the desert place. Oh, thank you, Father, for fresh wells of salvation springing up into everlasting life every time we assemble. Thank you for reminding us and admonishing us about your word. We rededicate to your word. We rededicate to the ways of God. We rededicate to just stirring ourselves up, praying in the spirit upon our most holy faith. Thank you. Praise if I cost. Thank you. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father.